Hey guys, and welcome to the cafe. So I wanted to talk today a bit about color. Again, I've really been on a color kick and I plan on staying on this color kick probably for a while. But uh, you know, when I was a faux finisher, all the finishes I did were very earthy, very soft and subtle uh, kinds of colors. And that that's my comfort zone. So that industry was very easy for me to adapt to myself to the needs and the desires of my clients. Well, since I've switched over to gotten away from the faux finishing and switched over to canvas art and paper art and collage art, color has been quite a challenge for me. So whenever I'm challenged in ways like that, I like to tackle it. I like to find tools and solutions that work for me. So I've got a few hacks today and we're gonna talk palettes. And I'm gonna show you some of what I do to get over this color fear and uh, discomfort around color. So let's go ahead and take this over to the table and get into it. All right, so here we are at the trusty table. Now, what I've done here is I've pulled some of these palettes off of Google Images and then just saved them to my computer and printed them out. Now, as you can see, these do not have, like the seeds might be a paint brand, but um, they don't have any brands that I know of on these palettes. So that's really not important to me. What's important to me is having a jumping off place. I want to be able to grab a palette I like and get as close to it as I possibly can. Now here, there's a couple things that go along with this. Now you can get palettes from places like Benjamin Moore and Sherwin-Williams and paint, you know, paint companies like that and a lot of them do sell little samples but your craft paints are going to be less expensive and more readily available so if you want exact you could probably i'm sure hop online or go down to your local paint store and get some color palettes and just like this or you know a little bit more interior is what they usually look like and you can get the exact colors but for me I don't need that I just want to get close and as you can see let's take this page here so this is let's get a couple move my coffee okay let me try to there we go. Okay, so as you can see, this palette is very subtle. It's really beautiful and uh, quite very pastel-y along with black. And then my palette is a bit brighter, a bit more intense. So it's definitely not right on the money, these two palettes, but this gives me a jumping off place in order to get some color combos that I'm gonna like. And then here's this worn turquoise. Now, as you can see, same thing. These are not exact, here's the colors. And then here's what I have. Now I wanna bring another point to this. This is so much darker than this. However, it is the same kind of shade. So mixing this color with white, I can get this tone. I did go ahead and go straight out of the bottle for all of these just because I wanted to be really simple and fast and I can always adapt these later. But I wanted something quick and easy, so let me show you a few of the palettes that I have right now and um, real quick let me go back for a second so what you can do too and let me find it here it is let's look at this one for a second now these blues right here are very gray they're very blue gray and I don't have these shades yet so what I'm gonna do with this palette is I'm gonna take this to the store with me and to let you know here Here's a little side note, if you're in the States or you have access to Hobby Lobby paints, you can get paints 30% off the craft paints, these ones here. Um, they go on sale like every third week. So if they're not on sale, you can wait.
great and they will be on sale. But what I'm gonna do is take this with me and then I'm even gonna take a pen into the store and then as I collect the paints I want for this palette, I'm actually gonna write the color very quickly on this page. That way when I get home, I don't have to play a guessing game. And you can really run into trouble with that with some, especially if you're buying paints for, let's say you're buying 20 paints for five or six different palettes, you know, you can really get in the weeds fast. So I would recommend taking the time to just write it while you're in the store. Then it's done. Then you just come home and put your colors on and you're good to go. Now, um, these ones, look at this palette. This is so rich and beautiful. Let me bring you in. I love this color palette. And what I did here was, this is more of a blue, and I don't have this color a shade of blue, so I am gonna pick that up when I pick up this palette over here. But I did go ahead and add a couple purples. And here's what you can do. Once you get your palette, you can look at it, and it is very intense, this palette as well, but it's okay. I can always knock it back. I love to knock color back, so that is not a problem, but this literally gives you a jumping off place. Now, I do plan on going to, um, I want to hit Home Depot, Lowe's, and Benjamin Moore, and maybe Sherwin-Williams too, and when I do, if I pick up some palettes there, I'm going to go ahead and make another video on this because this is one of those topics that really does it's fine to give it a lot of attention now here's a couple I want to share with you and again I got these off of Google so um, you can go probably to Benjamin Moore I haven't looked online yet I really didn't want to wait to do this video because I've I feel I've waited long enough because I got all of these palettes ready to show you so I didn't want to wait anymore and this is one of those things. You can go down the rabbit hole on this topic for the rest of your life, literally. So you can definitely get exact. But I, like I said, again, I don't care about that. So look at how beautiful this little color palette is with this kitten and with the blue eyes and the browns and the creams, just gorgeous. And then this one with the hot cocoa and the blue cups, it's this palette. It's just more intense of this. So, you know, and I'm very attracted. Blues and browns are my favorite favorite color combinations. So it's very easy for me to get locked into that. And you will notice as you go through doing this, that you're going to be attracted to some of these palettes that are darn near the same. And you know, it's okay. It's okay. It just goes to show that you have a good sense of what you like. And I think we all have a better sense of what we like than we even realize. So this color is really far off. This is actually a very dark charcoal gray and I'm definitely here's another point I wanted to make about this so I printed these on cardstock because I wanted to be able to put paint on them and not have it go through to the other side but what I have is a file on my computer so this is really far off this color is really far off. This color is much richer than this one. So what I can do is I can use this palette, I can print this again, and I can get a whole new palette out of these same colors, and I can get very much closer. And here's what I did when I was putting these together. I just took this sheet and I swiped and then I let it, I, I would line things up like how does that look to me? And you know, mine are not. Very few of my colors are matching up to the palettes and that really is okay. Now look at this palette. This is such a subtle, beautiful gray and blue and cream. And then look at the pictures that go with this. Let me set it down so I'm not shaking and bring you in a bit. And then I will cover this one. 
This is one of my favorites. I love these subtle colors. And again, you know, like I said in the beginning of the video, and you guys, I'm working on my mic situation. I know it's like when I try to do voiceovers and stuff, it's so different from what I'm just talking like I am now. And it's a pain in the butt. So just know I'm working on it. But like I was saying earlier, I'm very attracted to the earth tones. And most of my palettes are reflecting reflecting that but that is okay you know I don't want to force myself to use colors I don't like I, what is the point of that so this palette right here is one of my favorites and look at that little nest with the eggs I just love these eggs and all the layers of color they have on them and the speckles and then these little stones here. Oh, you will have so much fun making these palettes for yourself. So let me move these. I'm gonna show you a couple more and we're gonna move into watercolor today too, just for a moment. So, okay, let's start with this. Here's this beautiful door and this is very similar to la 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 it's very similar to this one but it's different enough that it's worthwhile so this one I got kind of close and then this is much warmer so I could even add another brown to this that's way more toned down and I got quite close with this dark dark blue and this is definitely these are just close enough for me and I love this palette that I've created. Those colors are really beautiful. And look forward to this. I'm definitely gonna be doing paintings on this channel. This is kind of a long video for uh, just for what it is here, but I wanted to cover this. So I think I'll just make it about the show and tell of the palettes and we'll talk about the palettes and then stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing paintings with these palettes in the very near future. So look at this one now. This one is this beautiful these are these beautiful wedding color combos okay and this one has these four colors up here and I matched them very closely I think I think I did a very good job on this palette this is darker than the gray but that's okay with me and then in this picture down here there the bridesmaids dresses are much more rusty colored than the pale gold up here and all the pale creams so i went ahead and added the burnt sienna to this and then um look at this beautiful bouquet here and look at this beautiful place setting here. There is so much cream in this palette and yet they did not add any cream. So I went ahead and added folk art parchment to this here. So, you know, you don't have to just stay limited within the colors they give you. And another thing you can do too is you can go more or you can go less. Let's say you only like three of the four colors this literally for me like I said just serves as a jumping off place so I've got showed you those this is so fun for me and I really hope it's fun for you and if you like this kind of video because I think it's very relevant and super important to us as artists to be able to explore especially the topic of color. We've got all different kinds of topics to color, color, texture, uh, to cover, <laughs> color, texture, uh, collage, you know, um, the weight, balance, composition, there are so many things to think about in the art world and color is, you know, one of the most important. They're all so important. So if you like this, please let me know because I'm going to be making more palettes and I definitely going to jump into, I've been buying, this is funny, Michael's has a 40% off coupon like once a week, once every other week. Sometimes they get kind of stingy with it and Hobby Lobby took their 40% off 
off coupon away entirely. And then Joann's is very generous. I always get multiple 40% off coupons from Joann's. So what I've been doing, because Michael's has the biggest selection of golden paints, just as a side note for you, um, I go once a week to Michael's and I buy a bottle of paint like this with my coupon and I, I just limit myself to one bottle because I'm not paying full price. The, pr the price of golden paint is insane, but it's the best paint. But you know what? I like these. These are very opaque and a lot of them are very, they're not as, they're not near as good as golden. That's for sure. That is for sure. But this deco art brand and folk art, I really like these brands and you can thin these down with medium. You can thin them down a little bit with water. You don't want to go crazy. It depends on whether you're doing canvas or paper. Paper, it's going to absorb the color. You're much safer with paper it's so much more absorbent than canvas so you can have a lot more freedom with paper than you can canvas with these watering these down but these colors mixed with the beautiful translucent colors of golden is something I love to do I mix my brands all the time so now here's this other one very very cool palette and this purple is much more intense than this purple and I'd like to get a lot closer to this palette and I just don't have these colors right now. So very good idea to just pop over to your paint store with these in hand and you can't really like sit there and sample. You can really only take the bottom of the bottle because it would be, you know, highly rude <laughs> to stand there and sample the paints before you bought them. Not the best idea. And most of them are packaged anyway so you really can't get into it so I just wouldn't do it some people would but this is good enough for me this shows me and then a lot of times you'll have this on top too but not always so you know just grab your palettes and and set aside some time and take them with you and do it that way so okay that's the acrylic all right and it doesn't matter what brand of acrylic paint you're using you can mix house paint, craft paint, golden paint, it it doesn't matter. And I know I'm singing to the choir with you guys, but I just want you to know if in case you're curious or wondering about that, you can absolutely um, cross your brands and all that stuff, okay? And house paint works just fine with craft paint. I've been doing it for years. So let's move into watercolor real quick. Now I have, I bought a bunch of little Prima watercolor sets. I bought one at a time back when Hobby Lobby had their 40% off coupon. I, I bought one little color palette at a time and until I was able to collect all that they had and I was patient and this is how I am when I buy expensive art supplies. I just get very patient. I put money away and if I can do it, you can do it. But now what I did was I came up with my own palettes and then right here they say, you know, I've got here, let me bring you in. It's hard to see. So on all of these, I scrubbed out the color and I put O for, this is Odyssey, it's Prima, and then this one is Master's Touch, and this one is Complexion. So, I mean, I just marked where each color came from, and then I covered these with contact paper. And I did videos on this here on my channel with the watercolor, but they were not um, very well received. So. Um, we'll just go over it now, but you can come up and I came up with these cutesy little names. I've got cave dwellings. And again, I just marked the colors and I can pick this little foursome or this foursome or, you know, two or three colors out of this palette to use for one painting because there's, a, you know, 
eight, 12 colors is a lot for one palette. But, at, you know, you can really go far. So I've got summer, just blues and browns, which I say it all the time. Blue and brown is my favorite color combo. It has been for a really long time. That may be a different story tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, here's some subtle nature, some really watered down. And the beauty of watercolor is you don't have to, you know, you can do it with acrylic too. You can add white to any acrylic paint and lighten it up. And with watercolor, to make your colors pastel, you simply add water. So, you know, it, it's just so easy to get lighter colors, darker colors, all those things can happen. I tend to do all of my palettes straight out of the tube so far, that could change later. So um, here's Pale Grunge, and again, these are just watered down. They're just watered down. Here's Earth and Sky. So, you know, sky's the limit with these palettes. Here's Bold Drama. This is my least favorite palette of them all. I really struggle with bright, bold colors. I love them. I love them when they're done well. I do not love them when they're not done well. And it is one of those areas of fear for me, the bold colors. So I am going to be exploring more and more my, you know, phrases for 2022 is bold and daring. So I'm getting more bold and daring with color as well. So I've got jewels here. I love jewel tones. Now this bright Maui, I struggle with, but these deep jewel tones up here, I am in love with. So it's just a matter of, you know, uh, making stuff that makes you happy. Making these palettes is so fun and it made me so happy. And I'm able to go, ooh, I really like this with this. And I really like it with that too. And these together are nice. And then you've got boom, boom, boom. You know, you look at this palette really quick and you get a whole new palette out of it. I've got autumn. I did all the seasons, as you can see. And here's winter. I love these cool colors colors but this was the such a uh, therapeutic um, you know excavation this is really digging for treasure when you do these because you get to figure out what you love so there's all those little watercolor palettes now I want to show you I did this is now this let's do one at a time and I'm only going to cover this briefly. Now this is my Prima set Odyssey and then all I've done here is I've got the color Tokyo here and the color Tokyo there and then here's Rome mixed with Tokyo right there. Here's Amsterdam mixed with Tokyo and then you can tell the true color goes right down the diagonal middle of this chart. And what I've done is I've made really intense pigment on the top and watered down pigment on the bottom. That way I could get a really good gauge of what each color looks like with full on pigment and what each color looks like watered down. Now look at this Budapest color. We just used this Budapest in um, that project, uh, the cityscape, city of, I think I called it city of light. You, if you've seen the last excavations, you've seen it. So this Budapest color right here, this purple, is so lovely. Look at that. The dark of it is really intense and the light of it is just gorgeous. So, you know, you cannot go wrong adding. That's another point I wanted to make. I get so excited. I forget, you guys, I forget. But um, what I wanted to say is that, you know, Mix your acrylics with your watercolors too. And the secret to success with mixing acrylics and watercolors is to work on watercolor paper and to use your watercolors first. Now in that video where I made all those pretty little city of light, uh, I did six, six little pieces of artwork in one. And if you haven't watched it, I'll go ahead and link it below so we can move on from that. But um, I, 
used watercolor and then I used acrylic paint on top. And if you want to keep your acrylic paint colors true, all you have to do is hit your uh, watercolor. Once you do the watercolor, where is it? Here we go. Just hit your watercolor with some medium over top and then that will seal it. And then you can add your acrylic colors on top. Now, something I like to do is add my acrylic colors to the top of watercolor and allow the um, color underneath to activate and create new colors. So there's many, many ways that you can do this. Now this is just another one. This is Prima Vintage Pastel and I did the same exact thing. So you can really see, I mean out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 colors. Look at how many colors you get just out of 12 colors. And this is just mixing straight across. So you know it's endless. That's what I love about watercolor. Now a couple other charts. I I, I'm chart crazy and I haven't shared this much here on my channel and I want to. Now I have different watercolor sets that um, I've collected over time and each time I get one I do a just a swatch of the colors straight out of the tube or the pan, whatever the case may be. Now this is my sonnet set and this is just straight up color. I spilled a bunch of stuff on this before I covered it with, I, I cover all of my uh, watercolor palettes with contact, but I did not catch this in time. As you can see, I've got spatter all over this thing, but it's okay with me because I can clearly see the colors that I'm getting in this kit by doing this. And look at this bluish green. Is that not the most gorgeous color? I love that one. I love the green deep and I love the browns, of course, the earth tones every time, earth tones. So a couple more here and then we're gonna wrap this up. And I, I really debated whether or not to do a project with this video but I'm not going to. We're just going to stick with color, color swatching, color palettes, color, color, color. And um, we're going to be doing, I'll be doing all kinds of videos and I will show you exactly what I'm using like I always do at the beginning. Okay. So now here I took this sonnet and I just took every color and I went across and down. So the true color again is always going to land diagonally on your chart here. Okay. So here you've got sap green and sap green. So here's how you can determine and it's just, it works out that way that it always ends up going down that way. And then you can see, oh, I really love this shade. Oh, all I have to do is mix violet light and sap green. And then you just come in and you mix it to the shade that you like. Watercolor is probably the most magical um, paint next to the golden fluid acrylics and the deco art fluid acrylics. I love the translucency. So you can do amazing things with watercolor and we are going to. Now this palette here, I took a class and I was told to take colors that I was attracted to and mix them together. And look at how fun this is because what you get Here's, here's uh, all the primaries. So I've got cool primaries and warm primaries. And then look at you, that's the orange you get. Here's the green you get and so on and so forth. And then I've kept just the tiniest sliver of each of those colors totally true so that you can see how it looks true and you can see how it looks mixed. And then down here, I did a couple others. And so, you know, different combos. I really am attracted to these combinations over here, especially here. Here, let's do this. I need to do this better for you. I'm always thinking about making your experience 
better and better. And sometimes I'm a slow learner, so I love that you guys are patient and bear with me and you're always on my mind and your happiness is always on my mind too. So just know that. So here's burnt umber, indigo, and raw umber. And then here are these lovely earth tones that you get from mixing those together. And then up here, we've got some lighter colors and then this gamboge and cad yellow and olive green. You can just go down the rabbit hole so far with these. And I really love the Payne's Gray, the raw umber, the olive green combo. And then what you can do is, let's say you want to use these two colors uh, by themselves. And then whenever you mix them anywhere in the painting, it's going to make a totally different color, but it's going to be completely compatible because you're using colors that are already in the painting. So if you take anything away from today's video, do remember that anytime you mix colors, let's say I put this purple on part of a painting and then I put this lighter purple on another part and then I mix them together and I put them in the middle together, it's gonna just go choo -choo 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 and click together for you. So keep that in mind and I hope you enjoyed this. This, I have been really excited and working behind the scenes on these palettes and I hope you like this and please let me know if you want to see more videos like this. This is, um, you know, now we're really getting into the soul of an artist with color. Color is emotional. It can repel us. It can attract us. It can magnetize us. It can skyrocket us into a dream world, you know. This is why I'm an artist. I, I live, eat, breathe, and sleep art all day, every day, all night, every night. I dream it. So, um, you know, if you're anything like me, and I know you are because you're here, uh, color is so important. So now I'm rambling, and I'm going to stop rambling right now and let you go. But please let me know what you guys like. And we will be making a lot of paintings in the very near future with these palettes. So I'll be sure to let you know exactly what I'm using. Have a great day, and I will see you very soon.